started guys, my camera crew as always is the wonderfully talented Mr. Sean Trevo. My chef's assistant is the one and only Mr. Dylan Trevo. Okay Shawnee, you take it away. There might be a bit of moving and up and down. Okay, so first of all, why am I doing this? Well, there's a couple of different reasons. Uh, first of all, I think it's absolutely crucial that people, and particularly kids of today, know where their food comes from and they don't think that it's in a polystyrene plastic package in a supermarket, that they see where it comes from in the beast, in the animal. Secondly, uh, I think it's very interesting for people to know at home to see how to cut up the anatomy of an animal, how to butcher it, that all you need is a good sharp knife if you know where you're going on the animal. Also, when you're in a restaurant and you know if you see a haunch of venison, if you see a shoulder of venison, well, you know exactly where it comes from and that you're not, we, I'll show you a big difference of a strip loin and sometimes people say it's the fillet and you're going to see the difference between the fillet and the strip loin later on as well. And also, most importantly, Dills, yeah. it's to prove that all these dipshit blogger influencers, model turned actors turned presenters who think they're chefs actually haven't a clue what they're on about because not one of them could do this. And that's my whole aim, well it's always been my aim, that's my whole aim for 2018, is to just to prove how ridiculously useless these guys are, okay? So, here, uh, uh, over to you, Donald. <laughs> okay, so that's the whole plan, all right? So I wanna show you, if anybody's any questions, Shawnee, make sure if they start asking questions, give us a shout. I'm gonna explain to you, first of all, what we have here. So in Ireland, because I know there's a few people around the world that are watching it, in Ireland, we have three main deer. We've got the red deer. Where would you find those guys? In, in, the, in, yeah, in the national park. They're protected, you can't touch them. We have got a fallow deer, and we have got what this guy is here, or should I say what this girl is here, is the Sika deer. And this is a female Sika deer that's been hanging for about, I think, seven to 10 days now at this stage. So it's absolutely in its prime to start butchering. And it's important that you eat the right sex of a beast, at the right time, okay? <laughs> Did Dad say sex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the people watching know what I'm on about. It's important that you eat the right animal at the right time. So that you normally only go for the males from, probably, so if you think this game is tasting very, very strong, you're probably eating the wrong animal at the wrong time of the year. The males is pretty much September to mid-October. After that, maybe end of October maximum. After that, they start going into the rutting system, full of testosterone and it really taints the flavor of the meat. That's why we have here a beautiful female deer. When it's hanged properly, done properly, I'm gonna put my phone away here. Uh, it makes all the difference in the quality and the taste of the meat. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we're gonna have a look at the shoulder. So Shani, you're gonna come in here. So a deer, it's very interesting. The bones that they have, they don't have a ball and socket joint from their shoulder onto the rest of their body like we have is in a shoulder. They have what's known as a Jake's bone. So I'm gonna take that out, you, you go over there for one sec. So what we're looking at here is there's a little line of meat. So you're just gonna come a nice sharp knife and this only takes a couple of seconds and then you can actually just pull it back. Can you see that, Shawnee, the way I've got in there? So they basically have, look at that, it's just literally peeling away from itself. The Jake's bone, the best thing to do is to Google it to see it. It's actually, it's not connected to the main part of the animal. It's quite an interesting thing. Okay, so we're just gonna take our time. I'm probably gonna go a little bit slower than normal so you can see what I'm doing. And you can see, this is why it's very important. See the way it's connected to the neck here. So you just follow, I'm barely touching this. You're just following the anatomy of the actual animal. Okay, so you can see that coming straight off. Now I've tagged everybody, I've tagged a lot of hunting associations and everything with the Facebook Live here because you see all these videos on YouTube, people and they're cutting away, they, they waste half the meat using hacksaws and all kinds of stuff. If you're going to kill the beast and if you're gonna hang it, the least you can do is give it the ultimate respect and that's to butcher it properly and get as much meat as you possibly can out of it so we don't waste anything. So I'm just following along here, look, you can just see the line of the neck and what have I got in my hand now, Dills? The shoulder. We've got the right hand shoulder. I might actually take out that Jake's bone. See how we're getting on in time, just to show you. So you can see, it's not a ball and socket joint. It's not like a chicken wing or, or one of these kind of legs of a chicken that's a ball and socket joint. It's a little flat, like a, like a shoulder blade, basically. So that goes yeah. there, okay? So how many shoulders has a deer got, Dills? Two. Okay, so I just wanna show you one other thing. I can show you in this piece here. 
you'll have heard of a shank of lamb or a shank of deer or something like that. So the animal has four shanks. It's got pretty much from the knuckle down here, this is the four shank, so the front shank, and we got down here the back shank. Normally in the restaurant, depending on the size of the animal, you get the back shank because there's more meat on it, okay? Just again, another little bit of interesting fact. So watch here, we've got a little bit of meat there. So we just basically separate it. And look, I'm just using the point of a very sharp boning knife, okay? But again, it's just, and you just let it peel back, peel back, and you can see the way it's just coming off like so. And we're gonna just cut that straight off. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Now, what's that, so Dills? Two shoulders. Two shoulders, okay. So just so we know, okay, just so people understand. The male deer, okay, the big deer, as I said, September, October, their necks, look how small that neck is. It's, there's not very much meat, it was a small female. The necks on the male deer, they're massive necks, and this will come all the way down into here. And we can use from this bit, bit up, say for stews, for dicing or something like that as well, or else you can fan it out and stuff it and braise it for three, four hours in the oven. In the female, there's not as much meat on it, okay? So we have two shoulders off. Good start? Yeah. Good start. Dill says it's a good start. Now, Shawnee, this might get a little bit more awkward for a second. So we're now gonna come down to the bottom of the haunch. Might actually swap you over here where Dill's is, Shawnee, just for a sec. So bear with us while our, keep the camera up so I don't wanna see my feet. So, Dills, you come over this side. I hope you go onto the stool there, Shawnee, so they can see. Any comments coming in, champs? Are anybody watching or are we talking to so ourselves? You said, FYI, four species in Ireland. The fourth is Reeves Mun Munjack. The Munjack, yeah, absolutely. But you wouldn't really find them on any kind of restaurant. That's why I was just saying we've got the tree more so kind of for the hunting and for the cooking. But you're dead right, the Munjack is here as well. But it's very, very rare that you'll see that. I actually, I've never seen it on any menu. I don't even know if you can shoot, if you can serve them in a restaurant or anything. Okay, so on my YouTube video, I've showed you how to they take the guts out. It's called field dressing. Uh, who said that, by the way? The Munchak. Very good. Very impressive. Ke Kevin Shapes Hefferman. Kevin, okay, very good. Heffernan, Thanks, Heffernan. Me, Kevin. Hefferman. Thanks to me and Kevin. Appreciate that. Uh, so in my YouTube ch page, I've showed you how to skin the deer, how to do it properly, and I'll show you how to take the guts out, or as we call it, field dressing the deer, okay? And again, this is all about giving ultimate respect to the animal because... Well, I don't know about anybody, but I only, I never get to hunt as often as I want to do, but I only ever hunt for pretty much something that I'm going to eat. I don't believe in just killing animals for the sake of it, but, well, unless it's vermin, but I only believe in if you're going to hunt a deer or something, you have to do it the absolute utmost respect of the beast, because this is what's going to feed you and your family. Okay, actually, Dilsey, you know what you do? Go over and get the jar of jerky that we made the other day, the big jar, it's inside. Okay, so have a quick look in here. We'll get to this now in a second. But this is where the fillets, those two there, they're going to be very small on the female. This is where the fillet is, back up to me, Shani, is in absolutely every single animal. It's inside the rib cage. That's why it's so tender, because it does no work, and it's protected by the bones. And there's a million and one things. You're not going to be able to see it that well. But we made this a while ago of our venison jerky, spice venison jerky, our uh, venison biltong, depends on what part of the world you come from, although Francois gave me a great explanation. You're gonna have to explain it to me again, Francois. The biltong is air dried, I think, and the jerky is, I can't remember, tell me again. Dehydrated, I think, or something like that. Okay, so let's look at the haunch. So basically what we've done is we've split the hip bone here, and there's two haunches, one on each side. Okay, so what we're doing is we're coming down the hip bone. You might need to walk around here a bit, Sean. If anybody really wants to see this, just, Ask the questions. If you need us to put the camera in a particular place, just let us know. So come over here for one sec, champ. Just stand there, yeah. And come back a bit, they'll be able to see it. So we've got the hip bone here. Now, every time you go slower, you always make a mess of these things. So you're just coming down into the bone. And again, I'm not expecting anybody to be able to all of a sudden butcher a deer by watching one simple video, but I just want to give you a very good idea. So in here, we come around and we cut off our bone. Come over behind me now, champ. In over there. This is pretty awkward for the cameraman. And then we're gonna come up along, and you'll see here, I was telling you about the Jake's bone. Well, here's the ball and socket joint from the hip going straight in, okay? So we're just gonna sever that. 
And we're just after clipping that off there. You see the way that's the ball and socket joint? Don't mind the knife deals. So we've all got those in our own little kind of shoulder blade. And then we follow the hip bone all the way up to the top of the carcass. And we now have, what have we got, Dills? Stand back for one sec, Johnny, and we'll show one beautiful haunch or one beautiful leg. Now again, I might do it again later on, or in another video, but the haunch is split into a number of different muscles. So most people would turn around and say, we just roast that leg. But I'm gonna show you, probably another video, because this will go on for a while, how to separate all the different muscles, remove the silver skin on them, and how to make them like a beautiful fill of the beef. Medallions of venison is what we call it. So that is one haunch for that one here. And the other one is basically, just throw the jerky actually back away there, so we don't need it. This is basically the exact same, only on the other side. Okay, so we're just gonna come down along. You can see here where I went, look. Up along the hip bone there, separated the ball and socket joint, and right up to the top. So we do the exact same here. Come in, separate it. See, come over, come over here, Shani, I'm gonna show you while it's still there. See the ball and socket joint there? We all remember this from school. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Can they see it? How's that look? Yeah. Oh, of course you can. Jeez, actually, it's pretty cool. Okay, so watch this little tendon here. See it, Shani, come back. You see that tendon there? Yeah, you can see okay, it. you can see it, all right. So we're just gonna give that a little nick with the knife, okay? And that's it, separated. Anybody who's into medicine, I know Dr. Nick Flynn watches these videos, he'll be able to associate with this. And then we just come straight up, and we're gonna do... Francesco has given me the definition of jerky. Oh, Francois, Francesco. What's he say? Call it out to me, so Sorry. Uh, beef jerky is used with sweet, sweet, molasses, molasses yeah. and air dried oh, yeah. in a shed, but biltong is used Spices and vinegar to dry out and um, dried in a dry warm box or hot press. Fantastic. And this man knows what he's talking about because he's South African. So, Shani, back up onto the chair there and we'll see exactly what we've got there, guys. What have we got, Dills? Tell everybody at home what we have. Two haunches and two legs. Two haunches and two shoulders. Now, here's what we do now. We're going to give the knife now a quick little knife, quick clean. And we're going to turn about the next part of the anatomy. Quick sharpen on my knife. I don't need any of those fancy steels. That's all I need. So look what we've done with just a knife, guys. We've separated the shoulders. Take a back seat onto, onto the other step. Yeah, without falling, please. <laughs> okay, now let's pick what we have left off. We've taken off the two shoulders. We've taken off the two haunches. Now, down along the back here, what have we got here, Dills? The strip line. Yeah, so either side of the strip line, okay? But right down the middle is we have the spine, the backbone. So basically, just to figure yourself out, it's either side of your own back, okay? And that's why it's great to understand the anatomy of animals because you can kind of associate some of it with your own body. Now, actually, this is what I'm always saying about these bloggers and all these kind of guys. Just because they think that they can cook, I could take your arm off, Maybe a couple of seconds? Yeah. Maybe your leg too? So does that mean I could be a qualified doctor just because I can amputate something? That's what wrecks my head about these guys. Anyway, we'll continue on. So, the strip loin, which is, I think, the best part of the beast, the muscles come all the way up and tuck in underneath the neck, on underneath here. So I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do. And inside, on the strip loins, right along the bone, there's a kind of a tready uh, sinew kind of thing that we need to separate away from the bones. And the rib cage is gonna come down pretty much at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing as we're doing it. We're gonna work the knife along the body. So right down the side of the strip loin, of the, sorry, the, the, the what's the word? The spine, thank you Dills. That's why you're here, to make sure I do the job right. And we come right down to the hip. And then we do the exact same by coming straight up along here. Sharp knife. So now I'm into the neck territory and the strip loin goes in underneath the neck. The strip loin stops pretty much around here. But we go up a little bit just to show you exactly, okay? So here's our sinew and here's our kind of bit of treads that we need to take off. So we're gonna come down and take your time with it, okay? It's a very sharp knife. Sometimes it does slip. Sometimes you do make a bit of a little mess, but just take your time with it, okay? And the hip bone comes pretty much in along here. And if you do miss any meat, don't worry, there's no wastage. It all goes off to become 
Mints. So we, what can we make with mints, guys? Burgers. Yeah, anything else? Spaghetti bolognese. Oh, I like the sound of that. Um, meatballs. 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 Sausages. Okay, Shani, come back over here now to me some back on the floor. How's our, how's our cameraman doing, guys? And like I said, if you think somebody was interested in this, add them into the comments, tag them into it. Declan O'Donoghue said, where did the dead deer come from? Aha! Where did the deer, dead deer come from? Well, put it this way, he wasn't dead when I found him, Declan. <laughs> so, up we go, we see a lot of mine in my knife when I'm flicking those. So here's our spine. That's the kind of tread there that I, I was telling you about that we need to separate. Can you see that on it okay? Yeah. That we need to separate off it. And then what we do is, come behind me over here, Shani, actually. Then what we do is very slowly, we're just gonna edge it off down to the rib cage. Now you see the strip loin will stop in a couple of seconds when I get down to it. So you can't really see that. Then. You can't really see how about there? Can you see there? Yeah. So you're basically just taking your time so that your your left hand you're peeling back with the right hand you're using the knife, the blade of the knife. And now you see this piece here, once we get to here, so that's our strip loin. Okay, the rest of it because this is so small, it's like the flank, we'll say. So there's not a huge amount of meat here. So look what we do, little incision there. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we just start coming up along. So use the knife. Now we start coming onto the rib cage, the higher rib cage. So again, I'm doing this much slower than normal, just so you can see what I'm doing. Now, here's what I'm saying. You see the way the strip line, I'll put it back on there for a sec, or the strap sometimes. You see the way now, you can just see that sinew, that's it beginning to go in underneath the neck. Okay, so we're gonna come up as far as here, and then I'm gonna cut it straight down because my strip loin is pretty much finished. So I'm gonna cut it straight down. Come straight up, boom, and that's our strip loin, our strap, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna trim it up. We might tr trim the two strip loins so we can see that. We'll have time for that. So look at that, that's, that's like your, oh, that, that'd be like your sirloin steak. Everybody would know what a sirloin steak, or sometimes you see it in the menu, your strip loin steak. That's pretty much what we have there. Okay, so let's take off the other guy. So again, you come down the other end of the spine. What do you think, Dills? How are we doing so far? I think we're doing good. Will I let you take over from here? No. You do the next one. Okay, back over this side for a sec, Shani. Sorry now, guys, I know there's a lot of walking around and moving. So again, we come straight up the spine and the backbone. And basically, I'm just doing the exact same thing. So you can say we are there, Shani, if you want. Just for a sec. I'm gonna separate the kind of sinew part. Up we go, take your time, take your time. This is like, we're talking now, you'll hear the butcher saying, the prime cuts. This is one of the most prime cuts that's out there, the most expensive ones. So take your time and there's absolutely no rush. But again, when you walk in to your butcher, you now know, say what the, how can we equate this to? This would, the strip loins would be your rack of lamb, basically. So now you know that that's exactly where your rack of lamb is coming from on the backbone. And now you know how it's come off the beast, so you can see exactly what you're getting. Okay, so we just separate, take our time. What do we do, Bills? We take our time. Take our time. Okay, Shani, come back over here, see if people can see it again. It's a bit harder from this angle. I'm standing pretty much at a tough angle, but I just want you to see Again, you see the way the kind of the fat and the sinew comes here? The strip loin is going right underneath. Look if I was to kind of, see that? Now we separate the muscles there, look. So the strip loin is going right underneath the neck. But this guy's a lot smaller, so I'm not too worried about taking off a bit of the neck. So I come straight down, straight through. Back over there for a sec, Chan, because I need to get into it like this. And we just go, can you see where I'm coming in along the, the angle? Now, I know it's not a usual kind of fun and games video, guys. It's more of an educational or, what do they call it, a tutorial. So here we have our second strip loin. Strip loin. Perfect, Dills. And we're gonna, we'll trim them up because they're easy to trim up later on. But let's kind of keep going on now. And I'm gonna show you how to take the neck off. So the neck, back behind me here, Chan, for a second. So the neck comes straight up. I said there's not a huge amount of meat on this one. This is quite a small female. And we just, so we're gonna follow. See there, that's still part of the neck. So this is really good for dicing up to use as a stew or something like that. You can mince it if you want. 
but it's a much more tougher. Go over there for a second so we can explain it. So this is how you ah, I turned it around. What did you do? <laughs> Shut everybody you. thought you turned it off. You're about to get sacked. So this is how you understand the better quality cuts of meat, okay? It's the muscle the animal are using, right? Oh, so, I What have you done now? Again. Okay, well stop messing, you clown. So here's how we do. The muscle's on its back, okay? Watch, the deer is up looking, am I around about to shoot it? Or is there another hunter out there? So his neck is continuously moving and his back's not moving that much. That's why the strip loins are so tender. His neck is up and down all the time. He's working the muscles all the time in his neck. So this is gonna be a tougher piece of meat. Use your head. The shoulders, they're moving around. The legs, they're moving around all the time. That's why they're slightly tougher than the strip loin and the fillet. So that's how you understand the prime cuts. Okay, Shani, back behind me now so they can see. Okay, come around here if you can. So we're basically letting the knife do all the work. Tip of the knife coming straight in along. Oh, here's the real boss, here's mom. She love when she comes in and sees this. So we're following the body, the bones. Hello. Don't worry mother, you're not on camera. And we come straight down. Okay, so just lift it up for one second. So any bit of thickness in the neck pretty much ends here, okay? So, sorry Shani. So we can just start peeling it back like this. And we now will have one bit of the neck off. Now, there's all these kind of, think of your own neck. Think of the kind of the spine coming all the way up here. So there's a couple of little indents of the bone in here. And that's why what I always do when I'm finished with this, I'll saw straight through his neck here and I'll make stock out of that. Okay, so we come straight up. And here we have one side of the deer's neck. See, a little bit. Thicker there, so it's good for a stew. Normally I'll take out that line of sinew, because that's obviously, you can't really eat that at all. So we shall put that in with our shoulders. Let's throw that outside as he'll be in shot for a second. Okay, other side of the neck. Champ, come over here to me. Okay, so just snip here. And watch, here's the spine. So you're peeling back, using the blade of your knife. Peeling back. Peeling back all the way along. Teresa Carroll asked, what's the nicest piece of deer to cook? I think you can't get anything better than the strip loin. Everyone talks about the fillet, but the strip loin, in my opinion, you cut it into small medallions, maybe one minute each side on a really hot pan. I think it is the nicest piece of meat. And remember, if it's too strong, they're giving you the wrong animal. Trust me when I say that to you, because deer game, it's not that strong when you know which one you're to be serving. Thanks for the question. So now look, sharp knife, Shani, get this, come up on top. So here's the little bits of bones that I've sent you from the spine. So just use your knife, coming straight down. As I said, you see some videos and they go, oh, you can't use this and you can't use that. Every single piece of meat can be used on the animal. Absolutely every single piece, because worst case scenario, let's just say I went, Oh, and I made a mess and I missed the cut and I left a piece of meat on it. Well, then you just go back onto that and you mince it. Okay, so absolutely every single piece of meat can be used. There we have, guys, look. That's the other side. What's that, Dilt? The neck. The neck, excellent. So if this was a bigger animal, here's what I'd do. I'd butterfly it, so I'd kind of cut that in half and fold it back and then stuff it and roll it all the way back up and you'd have a look, look at that, a lovely Sunday roast of a braised neck of whether it be lamb or deer or beef or anything like that. So we throw that back over there to our stewing pot. Okay, now we're getting close to the end. So be careful here, we're gonna nick all this off. Okay, now this, what I would use if it was bigger, you could kind of use it for, uh, again, roll it all out and stuff it and very, you'd, you'd be cooking that for about maybe three or four hours to make it really tender. But I'm gonna mince all this, but I just wanna show you where the rib cages are. Okay, so we bring up our knife all the way up to the top and be careful because we still have to get our fillets. So be careful when you go in with the knife. So I'm gonna put, look, perfect for mincing. Now, the only thing about deer fat is that it's quite rancid. Okay, so there's a quite uh, bitter taste off the deer fat. So what I would do is I trim off most of the fat. I leave a little bit on it, but I trim off most of the fat and I might add in maybe a half pound of, of, of minced pork, uh, 
pork belly, something fatty like that to make it nice and moist. Okay, so let's take off the other side here. Now I should have taken a picture before and after. I think I actually did take a picture, didn't I? Okay. Friend, what's his name? Francois. Francois asked... I worked with Francois, by the way, guys. How many years ago is it, Francois? It must be 15, 16, it must be close to 18 years ago, is it? Mother God, up in Dublin. Yeah? He asked, did you shoot the deer yourself, or where did you obtain her? Aha. Well, this was actually a friend of mine who got this one for me. So, as I said, I don't get out halfway near as much as, I, as I'd love to. But in Kerry, we're surrounded by these Sika deer. Anybody who's driving the roads late at night will tell you. They're absolutely everywhere. So here, more kind of a flank as to what you want to call it or something like that. So now, let's have a look back at our carcass here. Back up to here, shall we? So we've now taken off the haunch. We've taken off the bit of the flank here. And we now have inside dills, what's that? The you remember? remember? Fillets. The fillets, good man. So how do you know whether it's a good, healthy animal? Well, the first thing you, you always look for when you're hunting is, is the offal. So like the, the, the liver. The kidneys, the heart, are they in good shape? Is there any kind of sign of disease or anything like that? That's the first thing that you're looking for in it. But also you want to see a little bit of fat surrounding the, the deer, the, the, the fillets. So just a little bit of fat. Now on a male, there'd be an awful lot more fat that's on it. Okay, Jills, you've done nothing, so hold that there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the fillets, and this is why I want to show you this, okay? Everybody going, oh my God, he's about to cut his son's hand. If I do, Dills, just make sure you don't shout, okay? Why? Because it'll be our little secret. They'll have me up for, like, child stuff. Child abuse. Child abuse. You have the speed line to child line anyway, don't you? No. No, do you not? No. Oh, that was your last brother. Oh. Okay, watch this. You're talking nonsense. Look, Dills, come in here, Shawnee. Come in a sec. So this is the fillet. It's the most tender piece on the animal. And on this one, because it's the female, at this time of year, it's a quite small piece. That would just pull off, but I don't want to make any kind of, any rips on it. So I'm just going to watch that with the knife, tip of the knife. Look at that. It pulls straight out. So here we have, Dills. The fillet. The fillet. Now, there's another piece on a fillet. It's the exact same as the fillet of beef. It's called a chain. It's a fillet. It's on every single fillet of every single animal. So come in a little bit closer here, Shani. So the chain is this small little piece here. You see the silver skin that's on it? So you can just peel that off. And there's a line of sinew that runs right down the middle. So if I'm cooking that, I'll pull that out with the knife, okay? Now look how small, that's what I'm saying. When restaurants turn around and say, have you lost control of the camera there, have you? No. That you're having fillet of venison, okay? You're not because that's how small it is. On a male, on the biggest male I've ever seen, the fillet on this particular type of deer, the Sika deer, is maybe, maybe three or four times maximum the size of that. It's a very small piece of meat. So you'll see in restaurants, it's the fillet of venison. I'm telling you, uh, I'd be asking questions if I were you. Figure that one out yourself. Francois said 17 years ago. 17 years ago, Jesus. Did I have hair back then? I think I had. One of us had, anyway. So. We just come down and we're just taking off the other fillet. And we're pretty much done, guys. Okay, it's, it is actually just easy, but I want to show you exactly what else I'm going to do to it. So here we go. Look, there's our other fillet. Because in the animal, they each have how many fillet stills? Two. Two. Okay. So look, here's the chain. Again, you're just going to pull that off. And as I said, there's a line of sinew that goes through it. So you want to have it off. I don't know if anybody's enjoying this or whatever, but hopefully it's a different type of cooking video. It's certainly something you won't see many other people do because nine times out of 10, they don't know how to do it. Okay, let's have a quick look at what we have, Shani. And Dills, go over and grab the chopping board there for one sec, please. So we have our two haunch. Shani, go up on the, stair, on the chair so they can all see it. We have our two haunch. We have our two pieces of neck. Put them there for a sec. We have our two shoulders here that we can use for either stewing or mincing. We've got some of the flank along the outside of the rib cage. On a bigger animal, there'd be more meat there. And you could use it as a kind of a, you know, as I said, to stuff it and roll it and something like that. We have our two fillets. We have our two strip loins. We have our two chains. A little bit of fat. Show me that there for one sec. Throw the fat into the bin there, Dills. Actually, we don't need that. But I'm not going to go into it, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here as well. Use every piece of meat, every piece of meat, okay? So get your knife, and we're gonna take off the rest of the flank. So get your knife, 45 degree angle, right in onto the bone, and peel it back. Because this 
mixed with a little bit of pork belly is absolutely fantastic for mince, okay? So watch, you see the way I've exposed all the ribs on it. If you want it, you could get a saw, cut off the rib cage, and then you could do spare ribs, but there's not enough meat really on these, okay? So I use it for mince, it goes much further. Come over here, Shani, so people can see. Without trying to break your leg. <laughs> How are the cameramen and the crew doing, guys? Good. Good. Okay, so watch the way I just peel back. And we just come up along. This is kind of right up underneath the rib cage of the deer here. Everything, we waste absolutely nothing. If there's anything I hate in life, it's wasting food. So we take it off and again, look, that's just a little bit more of the flank, as I said. If it was a bigger animal, there'd be a little bit more meat on it. Imagine that stuffed with something nice. And then you just roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And look at that, you'd braise that for probably the best part of three or four hours and you'd have another lovely little roast. But there's not that much meat on it. I know I'm repeating myself, but just so we know. Now, we're not finished. I want to show you how to take out. Go up on that chair there for one second. Francois asked, are you going to use the offal? Uh, I actually, I haven't used the offal this time, Francois. Normally you could, you could, do you know what I made? Check out my YouTube video. We've all heard of steak tartare. Well, I made a tartare out of a deer's heart. Absolutely stunning. Soak it in a little bit of milk first just to get all the blood out. Dice it all up and then you make it like a steak, steak tartare. That's for the real die-hard hunters. Trust me, eating the heart. Remember that scene in, what was it, Last of the Mohicans? You know, when he argue, takes a bite of the deer's heart to show ultimate respect of the beast that he just killed. So have a look at that. Or else a little bit of sauteed liver is really, really good. So watch the rib cages here. Go over there on that other chair, you'll see it. So we waste absolutely nothing. So we go down. Look at this, we now go onto the inside of this rib cage. Or this rib, straight down, straight up. Now, yeah. I think you might see this, and that's, uh, that's gonna be my mincing pile. You might see this coming up now on the likes of uh, Eat Live, something or other, whatever, from more tea from my good pal Donal. He might show you how to butcher a deer one day. Okay, let's go, next one, here, up here. A little bit quicker for these guys. I'm gonna do one side just so you can see exactly what we're doing. And we're taking off all the meat. Okay, if I wasn't doing this on camera, I'd go a little bit slower and I'd be pulling off. See the way you just kind of pull off all this bit of meat here as well. See the way I do that? You get everything off, so you're just left with the bare bone. Here. Straight. Francois. Oh my God, Francois's doing all the talking. Meat is meat, a man must eat. I like it, I like it. Well, there's a saying, that if God wanted to eat us, want us to eat carrots, he wouldn't have made animals out of meat. So, here we go. Straight down. Now, see the way, the, this is the last bone that you can just click straight off like that. The rest now are more connected to the actual rib cage. So, straight down. Are you watching this, guys? Yeah. Because you're doing the next one. So, what I'm going to do with this now is I'm probably going to mince all this, make burgers, freeze them. Then I'm probably gonna, I might make more jerk, actually no, I'm gonna salt them, make like a kind of a parma ham from the haunches. I have my wooden box ready outside, right? And get my wooden box out there, dude, in the utility. And there was one more that we got to clip off. Okay, so look at this. So we're wasting absolutely nothing. See, look, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side, but I don't think you need to see that after I've done this once. So straight down, straight down, little nick. And I hope, what I'm hoping is people appreciate that, first of all, we now know the joints of the meat. We now know that the most important thing with food is waste nothing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put salt, seasoning, spices into that, and I'm gonna stick the two haunches in there for anywhere from probably up to a week maximum, and then I'm gonna dry it out. It could take about two months depending on the size. Thank you, my assistant. You're like Debbie McGee on Paul Daniels outside. And I'm gonna let it dry for about two or three months and you have the most amazing kind of parma ham made from our own wild Irish venison. So straight down and straight up. And you might think, you know, what the hell's he going to such extent to get all that little bits and pieces? Trust me, both sides of inside the rib cage, both sides will get you at least four burgers. At least four burgers. And that's a dinner in my eyes. I don't know about anybody else. But well, that is a dinner. 
So we waste absolutely. I hate when you see these videos and they go, right, we've taken off the haunches and we've taken off the shoulders and the back straps and the neck, right, throw everything else in the bin. Nonsense. I'm going to saw all this down and then make a big stock out of it. You still drunk up there, Shani? <laughs> yeah, falling all over the place. I told you, two brandies a day, no more, okay? You can't handle the turd. What are you laughing at? You're the one who's on the champagne. Okay, so look at that. Really, really simple. You're gonna get the drift. I'll finish the rest of this off camera, but look at that. That's pretty much all the meat off the bones. I'll do the exact same on the other side. We've taken everything else off. And I'm gonna show you one last thing. We'll stick that guy there. Now, I'm gonna show you this strip loin that I was telling you about, the strap. Because in my opinion, I can't remember who I do ask. Was it Teresa, I think, was it? What's the best piece? This, in my opinion, is the best. So, look what we got. Remember I told you it cuts in underneath the neck? So, just, you can push it across with your finger like that, separate the muscle, and absolutely nothing gets wasted. Trim the fat on that, and the sinew, and I put the rest of the meat into my mince pie. I like it, Dills, I like it. Now, where have we got this last guy? Look, just pull this straight back, and that's just a little bit of fat and a bit of sinew. Useless, no good, a little bit of meat up the top here, but the other stuff is just sinew, mincing, binage. Okay, now look at this, a bit of mince there. So we have what's known here as the silver skin, okay? So we wanna take that off. So put your knife up underneath, be very careful here now, and just tilt your knife up ever so slightly, about 45 degrees. And we're gonna trim off all that silver skin. Okay, it takes a few minutes. Let's give the old knife a little bit more. Grab my knife sharpener there, please, buddy. Quick clean, quick sharpen. Now, I keep telling you, good pots, good pans, and good knives, okay? Don't be wasting money on stupid gimmicks like pancake, keep a warmer crap. Don't need any other so. Good pots, good pans, and good? Nice. Nice. Okay. Now, straight through. This is more sinew and a bit of the neck there. Look at that. That's very, you can't do anything. It's not even sinew, you can't do anything. It's more the kind of the skin off it. You can't do anything with that, can't eat it. Well, I'm sure somebody out there has some sort of a video for it to Skin. Yeah, I don't know. You can't, it's, it's just it's rancid. The old deer skin is rancid. Trim it away. Mincy mincy. Anybody watching, Shoney? Uh, six, seven people. Oh, that's alright. Worse than talking to yourself. That's what happens when you get married. But don't. That's a joke. Oh. So trim this off. Look at that. Beautiful. Nearly there, guys. I think that's plenty. How long are we on the go here? We're showing you half an hour nearly. Is it more? No, there's no one's eye. Did I not say? Nope. Time's not on the thing. Four. 40 minutes. That's plenty for this video, I think. So now, here we have it all trimmed. Okay. Now, here's what I do. That one's a little bit thinner, so you go a little bit bigger. Beautiful. Then you start going smaller. Look at this. Pure meat, no fat. No cholesterol, it's such healthy meat. Look at this, absolutely fantastic. And what I would do, I'm gonna show you actually, because I hate these guys, here's what we do with this. I'm actually gonna show you. I'm actually gonna show you, trim that bit as well. Perfect. The last piece. Dill, sing them a song while I go get my thing. Entertain them, tell them a joke, tell them about it. No, actually, don't no, we get in trouble for that joke. <laughs> 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 We're already in enough trouble for the others though. Now, I'm going to show you. You can do this with fillet steak, you can do whatever. I hadn't planned on doing this, but this is the beauty of... This is the beauty of live entertainment. Okay, so we're going to make a very simple marinade for our venison. So we're going to put in... We never measure anything. About two tablespoons of oil. That could have been three. We're not too sure. Do it all by eye. I haven't got it wrong yet, have I? No. no. And we're going to put in maybe about maybe a half a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. 
my assistant. Thank you, Sam. And now, actually, go up there, see if you can see the dry herbs up there. It's one of the mixed organics in the top one. Have a look, see if you can't find it, I get it. Now, how many cracks are the peppercorn dills? 12. 12. 12, 10, 11, 12, and three more. Did you find any? You said I'm gonna show him. Look how slow he is. If Firmino was that slow on the pitch, would he still be on it? I can't. Ah, the one right, perfect. Yes. Perfect. Now, shaky, shaky, shaky. This works absolutely fantastic for Fillet steak, sirloin steak, bit of pork fillet, something simple. You're just home. Don't tell me you don't have time to cook. It takes absolute minutes. A couple of, what have I got here? Dried herbs. Not too much. Oregano. Could be mixed herbs, Italian seasoning. Doesn't matter. In with our bits of venison. Look at this. I think we might actually have this now. Okay. Get your hand in there. Mix it all up. Okay. If you've only got two minutes, that's all it's going to be marinated for. Ideally, if you leave it there for 12 hours, absolutely perfect. And that, guys, is your fantastic strip loin of venison. What have we shown them how to do, Dills? We've shown them how to butcher a deer. How to butcher a deer by just using, what do we use? A knife. How, you know, we'll do it with a spoon next time. Yeah. yeah, back next time we'll do it with a spoon. Because when you know what you're doing, you can do it with a spoon. Guys, thanks a million. Hope somebody learned something from it. We're going to finish off the rest of it and I'll take you a picture of just the bones that's left on the deer. But for now, say adios. Adios. See you soon. Thanks bye. a million, guys. Bye. Say bye, Johnny. Bye.